In my previous videos, I've been teaching you how to write a research paper. I've also taught you on how you can search for related literature as well as writing your conceptual framework. Then I realized I should also teach you how you can effectively discuss the findings, the result of your research paper. What's up guys? This is Sir Kiel and welcome to your online student guide. And if you're new to my channel, I'm Sir Kiel, a social studies teacher with master's degree in social studies. And in today's video, I'll teach you on how you can discuss the findings of your research paper, particularly quantitative study. And I know you're ready, so let's begin. Results and discussion is the meat of every research paper. It is where your readers get to understand further your research as well as collect answers from your statement of the problem. So you have to make sure that it is clearly presented, it is organized, and it is effective. And remember that that chapter is results and discussion. Therefore, if we say result, these are the findings. These are the answers, the data that you have collected, wherein it answers your statement of the problem. Well, the word discussion means you have to explain this data. You have to talk about these answers. You have to talk about these findings for your readers. Okay? But how can we write the results and discussion? Generally, we begin the results and discussion by placing a title, results and discussion. But we don't go ahead and present the table, the findings of our paper. What we usually do is to write an introduction of this particular part of the paper. We have to introduce to our readers what to expect from the preceding pages. And this particular short paragraph should explain to our readers how did we collected these findings okay for example after writing a short introduction we're now ready to begin with our discussion and for organized presentation of findings you have to follow these steps first this is actually what i did with my previous research papers and i also observed this with other researchers that to make sure that we are now starting our results or presenting the findings in each statement of the problem, we have to transform the statement of the problem into a phrase or into a sentence to make it as a subtitle for each results or for each statement of the problem. For example, the first statement of the problem is, what are the challenges encountered by senior high school students in modular learning? Now, before I present the challenges encountered by senior high school students, I should transform this statement of the problem to a phrase or sentence. So, I should write, challenges encountered by senior high school students in modular learning. So, with this subtitle, my reader now will understand or will um, foresee that the preceding pages or the preceding paragraph will solely discuss the challenges that students encountered in modular learning. Second, now that I have a subtitle for my first statement of the problem, I don't automatically write or present the table showing the challenges encountered by students. What I do is to write a short discussion of the statement of the problem. I have to make sure that my reader is ready and he, she understands the problem that I am going to answer with my findings. Okay? Just like this. And now that I'm done introducing the statement of the problem, I am now ready to present the table showing the results of the statement of the problem. What are the challenges encountered by senior high school students 
in modular learning, just like this. But as you can see, the table cannot speak itself. It only show numbers. And as the researcher, you have to talk about, discuss these numbers for your readers to understand and make sense of the findings. You are not going to explain the whole table to your readers. You only have to explain the main points of the table and you have to support your findings with related literatures or other studies. But if you think that your findings contradicts other studies, you can say in contrast with the study of or if it agrees with other related studies, you can say it agrees with the findings of just like that. For example, like this. As you might observe, there is a pattern in presenting the results of each statement of the problem. And what is that pattern? It is an inverted pyramid from the general to specific. How did I use that in presenting the sample presentation or result and discussion? As you observe, I have presented or discussed first the statement of the problem, which is the general idea. And then I have inserted the findings or the table showing or answering, presenting the results of the statement of the problem. And afterwards, I have supported it with specific related literature. Now, you are going to apply this pattern all throughout your statement of the problem to make sure that there is a coherence and seamless discussion of the results. Now, after presenting all the results, I have to end this particular chapter with a general conclusion. This is different from the conclusion right after the results and discussion. This conclusion, this general conclusion only close this particular page or chapter. For example, This short conclusion should answer the question, what are the implications of the results of your research to the general understanding of the topic or to the research problem? Remember, it should be brief, okay? Because there is a separate conclusion to the findings. There you have it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that this short presentation taught you on how to present the results of your study. I hope to see you again next time. Thank you for watching. I hope you like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Bye!